All right, today my guest is Andrea Nordic who is a, an independent insurance agent with Northway mm -hmm. here in Park Rapids. She's also the central region director of um, the Big Eye, which yep. is a, um, uh, it's a, well, what, what is Big Eye? <laughs> Why don't you have me ask, answer it? Why don't you tell us what Big Eye is? So there's one in every state. Um, okay. So obviously I'm part of the Big Eye Minnesota and they, they do a lot of things. They, mm -hmm do um, lobbying at the Capitol to uh, deal with things that are affecting the insurance industry negatively, kind of look yep. out for the consumer and us as the agent. They run a lot of continuing education classes and courses for insurance agents. They help people get different designations in the industry. Um, they help people buy and sell agencies. Uh, they do. They do a lot. They. Yeah. keep track of help keep track or look into weather trends they kind of form a bridge between the insurance companies and the agents allowing yeah. us to meet with them sometimes and voice concerns or issues yeah. that are going on in because we're more us agents are more in the trenches so they can kind of help us communicate with the heads of the insurance companies okay too so, so let's take a step back so what's the difference between uh, like an independent insurance agent and um, like a like a large uh, national insurance company like the ones you see on TV or, you know. Um... Well, so you got the insurance company okay. side when you think auto owners, which is one of the ones I represent, uh -huh. or uh, Liberty Mutual sure. nationwide. Uh, and then there's also captive agents. So people that sell American Family just sell American Family. People that sell uh, State Farm just sell State Farm. Okay. Um, so the big eye doesn't, uh, do anything with the captive agents. So if they work with all the insurance companies that sell through independent agents, I got you. Okay. So you have your independent or captive agent. You have your claims adjusters that work for the insurance companies. You have your underwriters at the insurance companies. We, us independent agents are representing the insurance companies products and we you know we call myself an insurance agent, which is sales, but it's, I'd also call us more educators to a lot of educating on uh -huh. the different products and the hundreds of different endorsements and the different insurance products. So, yeah. All right. So, um, just to kind of break that down a little bit. So you got the independent, you got the insurance agent who mm -hmm. represents the insurance company, like what mm -hmm. we would think of, uh, you know, a, a, uh, uh, Liberty Mutual or Geico yep. or whatever, yep. you know, whatever is yep. coming to mind here from, yep. you know, being indoctrinated by all these television yeah. commercials. Yeah. Um, and then the, the claim, and those are usually, are they, are they like publicly traded companies or, I mean, are they large? Uh, yeah. A lot of them are fortune 500 okay. companies. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay. I'd say most of the ones that people have are, there's some mm -hmm. smaller, what they call township mutuals too, even in Minnesota yeah. that, deal just with farm and crop products. Um, yep. There's just a lot of different yeah. companies and products out there. But those are the companies. And then the the claims adjuster, What what's the job of the claims adjuster? Okay, so they just investigate and pay your claim. So okay. you come to us as the agent with a claim on your car, home, or business. Yeah. We report it to the insurance company who assigns a claims adjuster who then all right. Talks to you, gets the facts of the accident, gets the facts of yeah, what so, went on at the house. So I get a fender bender and yeah. let's say you're my insurance yeah. agent. So I say, I call you up. I say, Andrea, here's what happened. I got into a car accident. Um, you know, I got some body damage mm -hmm. and everything like that. So then you, then you get on the phone with the, whichever company issued the policy. Yeah. It's mostly all online now. Uh -huh. So we just, yeah, put in just you or the other party's mm -hmm. information, their insurance carrier. Yeah. If you have an estimate from a body shop already, we can attach that. We kind of just get them all the initial contact info and yeah. the general info, and then they call you and take it from there. So And so that would be a claims adjuster calling yes. you. Okay. Yeah. So how much um, like investigation does a claims adjuster do like in terms of fault? Like, so if I get into a car accident, because I know a lot of people are wondering like, you know, if I get into a car accident, is my premium going to go up? 
you know, and does it matter whether the accident was my fault or the other person's fault? Mm -hmm. And kind of who makes that determination and and how are those things, um, you know, dealt with from the insurance company's perspective? Well, the first thing they're always going to check for is a police report. There's a police report there that lays it out. Perfect. Done. No one can really argue with it. Um, We find that a lot of them go pretty smoothly. The claim adjuster is just going to talk to each of the parties involved, verify with a police report. Sometimes if they can't really figure it out depending where it is it's just kind of a 50 50 deal okay each of your own companies are just gonna pay you know your stuff and we'll move on so so if if i'm in an accident with another person we have different insurance companies Mm -hmm. the claims adjusters adjusters will communicate with each other each other okay they'll talk to each company's claim adjuster will talk to you and the other party and then they'll communicate with each other and then they kind of reach a settlement between themselves yep oh that's interesting yeah what happens if they have a big uh, discrepancy or they can't they can't resolve it? Is there some kind of like a like arbitration or yeah, something? Yeah, then happens? you can kind of go to mediation or maybe <laughs> in severe cases, someone's going to get an attorney. And then yeah. once you're represented, as you know, then the attorneys will pass it out. So. Yeah. But it's the but, attorney for the person who was in the accident. Yeah. But oftentimes that would be furnished by the insurance company or? Well, sometimes people want to get their own. Yeah. Um, the insurance companies do have attorneys on their <laughs> staff yeah. to to deal with things or legal questions. Sure. But, but at that point, that's all just between the insurance company yeah. and the customer. That yeah. has really nothing to do with you at that point. No, right? we're, we're more at the back end. I mean, we're there to support our customers if mm-hmm. they're having trouble communicating with a claim adjuster, if yeah. they're just, you know, we can offer, hey, look, we can talk to a claims manager, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, pay, remind our client, did you get them this and this piece of information? You know, but we're more at the other end. We we got you and sold you what you need, you know, in the yeah. beginning, but okay. we don't write the claim checks. So those come directly from the insurance carrier. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, and so we're at, since we're on the topic of of auto insurance, mm-hmm. there's there uh, you we were chatting before, and you you told me a statistic. I thought it was it was pretty incredible. You said that there had been more claims. Well, that's the home side. Oh, that's the home side. Yep. Okay, but yeah, okay. we can stay on the car insurance yeah. thing and talk about. Yeah. I know it's a hot topic, even on local right. local national news. Uh, stage the drastic increase in prices it's so. really spiked hasn't it yeah in our state in particular uh yep and i mean obviously in florida it's not going to be great there's mm-hmm. been a lot of flood and hail claims there's companies that have pulled out of there um so the whole auto insurance rate gosh there's so many variables yeah. kind of like we were talking about before um inflation in the economy is definitely an issue i mean labor costs at the body shops, the cost of parts, all that yep. is up. Um, I know people are frustrated because you're paying a ton at the grocery store, you're paying a ton for gas, you're paying a ton everywhere, and then you come to pay your insurance, <laughs> that was just one more thing that yeah. is up 40 to 50% or several years ago. Um, yeah, weather here has been a big issue. Um, hail and things, not as much as on the homeowner's side, but kind of like we were talking about, one of the biggest factors is you drive a car 20 20 or newer you're driving a big computer Mm -hmm. and you talk about a lot of people have free glass on their auto policy free windshield replacement well i've been doing this almost 22 years there was a time when a windshield was three four hundred bucks now we've seen them up to two thousand because Hmm. all the electronics in there electronics the safety sensors that have to be recalibrated you have cameras and the headlights um a lot more plastic so Mm -hmm. fender benders you don't bump out dents anymore you replace the whole front end um depending on the severity of the crash the whole computer system is screwed up that's really expensive to fix it's just um there's a lot of distracted driving Mm -hmm. obviously back when i um started in the industry people weren't texting and driving and like we talked about the car Mm -hmm. itself is kind of a distraction depending on how much computer yeah. stuff there is and how much how big the screen is on the dash and yeah all the things that it can do so it's just it's just drastically changed in the yeah. last several years and kind of like the homeowner's side now the companies are okay we got to have people go higher deductibles i mean there was a time when people had just a hundred dollar deductible so if you hit a deer you just pay the first hundred bucks 
Now it's going to be most common to have a thousand dollar deductible. Yeah. No matter what happens, you pay the first thousand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's so, tough. Yeah. Because they're trying to keep prices down, so you got to put a little more on the consumer, you know. And they've it's changed so much too with um. Well, this is a whole nother topic, but you could get into the AI, the artificial intelligence, and all the technology things that they can do to kind of track crash trends now too. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm storm and weather payouts and all that. So, so. They, that's how they can calculate rates based on how your proximity to areas that are problematic in terms of having multiple yep. crashes and stuff like that's that. A, I mean, that's always kind of been the thing. Your, your auto rates will differ depending on your zip code. Yeah. Mostly because of the amount of traffic you might have in well, your I, zip code. I but. used to live in um, Kings County, New York, which yeah. I think actually has one of the highest populations of any individual county in the United States, yeah. maybe outside of like Los Angeles County or something like yeah. that. And because of that, I think the the car insurance rates were the highest. I mean, yeah. And uh, so it just has to. It's a simple thing if you think about it. The more cars there are yeah, going to be, exactly. The more crashes there are going to exactly. be, right? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a lot. What it comes that. down to. I mean, yeah. in Minnesota, the comprehensive part of your full coverage. There's a lot of deer up here. I mean, yeah. Just yeah. There's so. So I wanted to ask you about that. So mm -hmm. there, there's basically three different uh, car insurances that make up the the full package, right? You've got yep. your your liability, yep. your comprehensive collision, and your collision, right? And then you add in roadside towing and then rental car expense. Okay, so those are all. That's a separate policy. Yep. For well, those? it's separate endorsements on your policy. Separate yeah. endorsements. Yep. Okay, so um, can you just tell us briefly, like, what those the basic elements of each one of those, like, say, three is, and then the yep. other uh, add-ons as well? So you talk liability. I just always, when I'm talking to clients or potential clients, I just mm -hmm. always say liability to others your yeah. lawsuit coverage. Okay. So that's what you got to have by state law to be on the road. Yeah. So that's no physical damage coverage on your own car. That's mm -hmm. just if you hit somebody else or yeah. hit their property or whatever. Um, and there's a whole bunch of different limits that you can pick from too. Mm -hmm. well, um, is that called no fault or something? So or? no fault is the medical side. So okay. that's kind of wrapped up in the liability. If uh -huh. you have liability coverage in Minnesota, you always ha you also have no fault, okay. which mm -hmm. is personal injury protection. So getting an accident, no matter whose fault it is, your auto policy in Minnesota will pick up your first twenty thousand in medical expense. Oh, okay. So that's what that means. That's what no fault means. Yep, that uh -huh. your your own policy is going to pick up your first twenty thousand in medical expense. Mm -hmm. Then you go to the physical damage side, um, collision, just like it sounds, colliding with anything, another car, a tree, a post, anything. But your vehicle has to be moving in order for the collision to yes. apply, right? Yep. And then comprehensive is at weather, acts of God, deer, mm -hmm. any animal. Um, the glass is worked into there, the hail, the vandalism, sure. pretty much all the things besides. Theft. Theft, yep. Yeah. So comprehensive is what um, it's being paid out, you know, in Florida right now. That's where the water damage or flooding mm -hmm. or all that's going to come from. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so if if I I have a parked car and I wake up the next morning and somebody smashed into it, would that be covered by my comprehensive or my collision? Well, actually, I guess it doesn't have to be moving. That would be collision, but we'd report it as a hit and run so that it doesn't go against you as oh, okay. a at fault deal. Yeah. So, all right. Um, and is there, I mean, are there any circumstances under which a person would choose to get collision, but not comprehensive or vice versa? Or is it kind of, you get one, you have to get both? No, we got a lot of people that, um, just for budgeting reasons and kind of financial strategy, maybe their car is about, see it most commonly, I think when a car is about 10 years old, mm -hmm. um, especially maybe people that don't drive a whole lot. Hey, I'm going to take collision off, but I still want that glass coverage and I still want that deer hit coverage there. Uh -huh. Also, um, talk about this a lot. Your homeowners is not going to cover your car, even if it is inside your garage when the house burns down. So you want to keep that comprehensive on there if you want the fire coverage, even if it's uh -huh. in a outbuilding in doesn't matter. Storage somewhere, yeah. the car has to have that comprehensive to be covered for fire. So, so a deer hit is not collision. No, it's under that comprehensive. <laughs> yep. Okay. <laughs> See, that's how it gets a little confusing. Right? Well, yeah. the deer collides yeah. with 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 us, so ah. that's that's how it's looked at by the industry. So I the see. deer hit me. 
So. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. that's funny. Um, all right. So here's the question that everybody wants to know about auto insurance coverage around here, right? Mm-hmm. I've, I've had many, many conversations with many, many different people about this one basic question. Mm-hmm. What happens if I'm ice fishing and I drive my pickup truck out onto the lake and it goes through? Will my insurance cover that? And um, will they will they reimburse me for the car? But then also, well, what about the um, cost of uh, fishing the, the vehicle out of the lake? <laughs> yes, this is very common up here. Uh-huh. So um, be careful here to never speak for every of course not. company no. out and, there. And do not, yes, yeah. do not take everything that she's saying with a grain of salt. This is just a in, in general yes. question. Yes. So in my experience in the companies that we represent, mm-hmm. if this, we're going back to this comprehensive coverage. If you have comprehensive coverage on your vehicle and it goes through the ice, yeah. yes, as a general rule of thumb and in my experience, that should cover it. Okay. Subject to your deductible. If yeah. you the towing or roadside assistance, possibly the cost of getting it out of there. Because that's really expensive yeah. too, is what yeah. I'm understanding is that, yeah. you know, because you got to pay these specialized companies to come out and fish yeah. it out and yeah. And then, okay, these fish houses, some of these people invest big money, you yeah. know, well, anywhere from 10 to, I've seen them up to 30. Um, it's just like a vacation camper, camper trailer. You can schedule those on your auto policy too, the fish house itself. Uh, because then if that has comprehensive on it, just like your car, and that goes then you under, then that. that you get the fish house itself yeah. replaced. Um, the only kind of caveat that I can think of, I mean, as far as a claim adjuster investigating, I mean, if you left your truck and your fish house out there after oh, yeah. they had yeah. the advisories to get sure. them off sure. or, you know, different things. And, and that's kind of like, it brings up this question of like, what is sort of, you know, there's there's risky things to do. And then there are like very risky things to do, right? Yep. So, you know, um, I don't know. Driving in a rainstorm, okay, you know, probably not advisable, yep. but sometimes people have to go where they're going to go. And, yeah, yeah. you know, they get into a car accident and total their car. It seems reasonable that the insurance company would pay for it. But, I mean, and then you get to the point where you're driving your, you know, two-ton pickup onto the onto the ice mm-hmm. just for no other reason than to re- recreate out there for fishing. So yeah. it's not like you had to be out there, Correct. right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then you're saying, okay, uh, the insurance, in your experience, companies in the past have provided yeah. coverage for that. but. Where where do you draw? I mean, that's got to be pretty close to the line in terms of risky things to do. Like, where does where does somebody cross that line to the point where, in your experience, you've seen insurance companies say, you know what, no, you you are that behavior was too risky, and so we're not going to cover that. So, uh, believe it or not, I've, I've never actually personally experienced a claim where mm-hmm. that's uh, come up. Um, yeah, I guess I I don't have a lot of answer on that. Like I said, I just I could. Yeah. Foresee it happening if you were <laughs> out there, I mean, well into well, for drag March, racing. Saying, yeah, or, things like that. Yeah, you know, there are specific yeah. exclusions for racing and stuff, okay. you know, mm-hmm. like on an auto policy. Um, so those will all be pretty much spelled out on the policy. Yes. Yep. Okay. All right. Yep. Do, have you ever um, uh, met with a customer who's actually read the entire policy? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> actually, we have had a handful through the years that yeah. have actually brought uh-huh. things to us yeah. that you know what? I actually have to get back to you. I have to go to the company and ask yeah. on that specific yeah. sense. We've had a few, so they do their homework. Yeah, yeah. educated consumer is a good consumer, and good for them. Yeah. There's a lot there. I yeah. mean, there's a lot there. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, the the spiking in prices in auto insurance has been due to a variety of factors. You mentioned inflation. Um, technology, technology, cost of fixing things, and some and weather, the weather stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the accident severity. And um, and it, from what I understand, I watched a video on KSTP about this, and it was I think it was from August mm-hmm. where he said that Minnesota's rates have spiked more than any other rates across the entire country. And I guess to be fair, some of that was due to the fact that we had extremely low rates prior to that. Yeah, it's it's hard to say. I mean, yeah, yeah. I do I do know we're 
one of the states that's increased by the most, mm -hmm. if not the most. Um, obviously, Florida and California are going to be not that far behind with all the flooding and fire and things. Um, every yeah. state has different rules on what you got to carry, too, as far as liability limits and mm -hmm. the medical and all that. Um, but, yeah, we, we are definitely in the top, or, yeah. not the top, in the top of like four or five so and would it um, also be fair to say that a person on average would pay more for car insurance if they you know just all thing other things being equal if they lived in hennepin county versus say yes. like a hubbard county yes okay. you're you're gonna pay more down there and that's yep. just due to the more cars. volume of traffic like you said yeah, yeah just total common sense but that much more traffic that much more chance of an accident with somebody so okay um so then um getting into the homeowner's insurance. Mm -hmm. And now I want to talk about that statistic where you said that there had been more claims that were that were made against uh, insurance policies between- For hail and wind, for specifically. Hail and, for for yeah. hail and wind, 21 uh, to 23. Then 1981 to 2021 combined. Combined, yeah. Yep. So- um, And like we talked about, quick interjection, you go yeah. back before 1981, you even go 100 years back, there has been some really bad cycles of weather. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. been cyclical going way back. We had a good stretch there, but- Yeah. Um, so, I mean, yeah. we're not, you know, I mean, I know it's obviously like a political issue to say, well, that's obviously like climate change mm -hmm. or man-made climate change. Let's mm -hmm. just call it that because this climate change has happened over the course of- history many times, oh, yeah. but yep. regardless of what actually uh, caused this, I mean, I think the hard data suggests that there are more claims and that obviously has an effect on, on yep. rates, right? Yeah. I, you know what I, I, we've spent hours as, as has every insurance agent in the last couple of years, we've spent hours talking to clients. Um, kind of the metaphor that I've used is that these homeowner rates have kind of been like a bubbling volcano, I would argue, for like the last 10 years. So, you know, you had people with $500 deductibles on their homeowners. You had for a long time where you could maybe, let's say your dishwasher leaked and maybe like thousand bucks of flooring damage. Mm -hmm. You report that claim, not much effect on your rates. Mm -hmm. I mean, the mm -hmm. reporting of those little claims and there was lots of, uh, semi-maintenance endorsements available on the homeowners. Um, you know, then you had increasingly bad weather. Um, you had the increasingly bad inflation. And, you know, back up a second. When you talk replacement costs, you know, because there's all this insurance lingo that gets really confusing for people, and that's why you have an agent, so you have an educator, like I said before. But you talk replacement costs, I like, I like to just refer to it as rebuilding cost. I mean, 99% of people, your primary home, you are insuring it for what you would pay someone else to rebuild it from the ground up new. So you're not looking at, we honestly, to a point, don't really care. Tax assessed value, market value, all that. Mm -hmm. We're not concerned with the land value. We are just looking at the, the structure. The bank cares about that, but, but the Correct. insurance company doesn't, right? We are looking at the structure itself and what it would cost to Mm -hmm. pay someone else to rebuild that, repair it. Well, the cost per square foot to rebuild over the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. You know, I yeah. mean, I've, I've seen some estimates lately up to like 400 bucks a square foot, even around here. Mm -hmm. I mean, 300, 400 a square foot. So when we write a homeowner's policy, we, it's not like we just look at, well, what'd you pay for it and whip that number in there. We do a whole, no. we do a whole rebuilding cost calculator. All these companies have pretty elaborate software where you put in your type of exterior siding, your type of roof, how many bathrooms, type of flooring. And it's based on the existing structure. Though. Yep. So if I've got like a brick house or yep. something, then you're going to do a, how much would it cost to rebuild a yep. brick house? That's okay. what we're putting as the yeah. exterior type of siding. Okay. And then you got vast differences in bath and kitchen qualities and the amount of square foot of decking you have and mm -hmm. attached garage and all the things, you yeah. know? And then for a long time, um, got people, you know, all these, a lot of the companies, you could have full replacement cost of your roof, even if it was 25 years old. You know, I think we're, it's going away from that now. People got to have higher deductibles, a lot of states just okayed it that you can have percentage deductibles, meaning my house is insured at 400,000. My wind and hail deductible is going to be 2% of that. Um, 
I don't know of anybody really that you can get a, like a five hundred dollar deductible anymore. Mm. And it's 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 coming all back to the roof and siding and the wind and hail. You're gonna get a discount if you have a steel roof or a metal roof. Obviously, it's a little more hail resistant. Um, for the first time ever, we have companies saying we're not going to write your house at all if the roof is more than 10 years old. Um, we have a lot of companies saying from the get-go, your roof's going to be depreciated. Now, granted, if you have a two-year-old roof, that's not going to be depreciated much you know, mm -hmm. in a claim. But if you have a 25-year-old roof and then it gets hailed out, it's kind of that's putting it back on the homeowner a little bit for yeah. to absorb some more of the cost. If so, a person gets a new, gets a new roof, should they notify their insurance? Oh yeah. yeah, we we even send out annual letters reminding you to do that. Yeah. Hey, did you replace your roof? Because that's a premium discount plus that drastically affects how your claim is settled. Oh, okay. so arguably the age and type of your roof is number one thing okay. in the Minnesota homeowners market. Number yeah. one thing. Yeah. I heard about these people, and I don't know, I mean, this is all just secondhand. I've never actually come into contact with them, but I heard about these these roofers who kind of, they're enterprising, and they will go around to various buildings, like, say, churches mm -hmm. or, you know, whatever the case may be, and they'll ask to speak to whoever's in charge, mm -hmm. and they'll say, can I take a look at your roof? Mm -hmm. And they're like, yeah. So they go up there, and they find some hail damage or something that mm -hmm. had been there for who knows how right. long. And then they, they come down and they say, you know what? You can get a brand new roof. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's not leaking, you know, yeah. anything like that. Um, and, uh, I mean, is I don't want to call that abuse, but it, it, it sure seems like, you know, that you're kind of looking for, for you know, uh, claims where they may not have existed naturally. Yeah, is this they, a problem? Yeah, those can be uh, referred to as storm chasers. It's storm been an, chasers. It's been an okay. issue in the industry. Mm -hmm. Um not just the big eye, but the the lobbying division of the big eye, mm -hmm. and this is not just a Minnesota thing, um, mm -hmm. has dealt with that. Um, yeah, we've uh, advised people to be leery of those people, like, and they'll sometimes say, well, we'll just even, you know, take care of communicating and negotiating with your insurance company. No, that's not even appropriate. The mm -hmm. insurance contract is between you as the homeowner and... Mm -hmm. the company you know like no you're the only one that should be talking yeah. to your agent and or the claim adjuster mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and yeah don't don't sign anything and then there was some issues there with kind of beefed up prices and i know there was a lot of issues kind of going off of that in the metro um people kind of going crazy with the amount they would charge for tree removal and stuff so now there's kind of some things that got put into place uh, yeah. legislatively wise to have some caps on that. Cause obviously that goes back to insurance rates then, you mm -hmm, know? So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, storm chasers, they've been, it's been a little bit of a, a little bit of an issue <laughs> and not just Minnesota. So yeah, everywhere I'm sure. Yeah. Um, all right. So, so we talked about uh, home and auto, mm -hmm. obviously those things are, you know, oftentimes you can get a better rate if you bundle those together, at least Correct. if you believe yeah. what they say on TV. Yeah. Um, the ATVs and the motorhomes can get tacked on to one of those policies generally or? Yeah, we've kind of changed how we look at that. Uh, we like to put the toys, as I call it, your yep. side-by-sides, mm -hmm. ATVs, snowmobiles, boats, all that on their own separate policy. Like okay. to keep them off of your homeowners because then if you have a claim with one of those things, then your homeowners is not oh, going to yeah. go up. Yeah. So the more things you can kind of keep separate, the better. Okay. So. And they don't, they don't have any bearing on each other, the claims. So like if you've got a boat uh, policy, you make a claim, it's not going to... You know, the insurance company's not going to say, well, that's a that's a dangerous person or something yeah, like that. Yeah, nope. No, okay. nope, they'll just look at that one yeah. policy. Yep, yeah. exactly. So what what's an umbrella policy then? Yeah, this is a um, hot topic. So umbrella is just uh, liability to others. It's kind of your asset protection policy. You mm -hmm. can get them one million all the way up to, I mean... Mm -hmm. multiple millions if you're talking commercial umbrellas, yeah. um, especially like some of the big contractors and the Metro and whatnot. Um, you know, if you own especially several homes, you got a lot of toys, you got teenage drivers, mm -hmm. uh, it's big asset protection. So uh, I always like to use the auto accident example. If God forbid you are in an at fault accident, let's say it's your fault. Let's say you 
you uh, total an SUV plus there's injuries, the potentially 300 to half a mil off your auto policy is not going to go real far. With, you're going to get, yeah, you're going to get sued above your policy. Yeah. So then once those auto policy liability to others limit was paid out, then your umbrella would kick in after that, which is hence why they're not very expensive because they're not the primary policy mm -hmm. that pays out. Mm -hmm. um, but it is some asset protection so that someone couldn't go after different... Yeah. I mean, they can't go after your primary home, but no. go after other assets and yeah. cash savings. And so yeah. it's recommended for people who have a lot of assets yeah. outside of just their their yeah. merit or their uh, yeah. their home. Okay. Yeah. Um, they run like two hundred to four hundred a year. Okay. Maybe up to six hundred if you have a yeah. lot of toys, a lot of young drivers. You know, really high horsepower motors on boats, things like that. As I mean, you know, it's it's interesting too because you know somebody in some office somewhere has taken all this data mm -hmm. and crunched it and got to the point where they'd said we can offer this rate. Uh, is it is that the called actuaries? actuary? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So I, I mean that those are the people who work for the insurance yep. companies. Yep. Yeah. They're figuring out the rates. Yep. They're looking at just number crunching and yeah. data all day long. Yep. And that's all they do. That's all they do. <laughs> Sounds great, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> Do you have any contact with any of those people? Or? We we don't talk to them. We talk yeah. to the underwriters a lot because yeah. they're the ones actually reviewing and okaying the policies that we submit. But no, we would never talk to an actuary. So, so. an underwriter is someone who works for the insurance yep. company. Yep. So they look at the applications that we send in, verify mm -hmm. for accuracy, maybe ask follow-up questions. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very common now. That wasn't the case uh, when I started in the industry that the companies themselves will go out and inspect your home that first year it's new business mm -hmm. just to hey is the roof in the condition that you and the agent say it is 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 that the square footage is that the type of siding mm -hmm. and they don't need to go inside but just verifying the the what exterior yeah. stuff and that goes back to trying to reduce the wind and hail pail because you know you or your agent say that roof's in great shape and it's only Five years old, we're gonna go make sure that's the case. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. um, okay. So, um, are there any other uh, types of insurances there? I mean, aside from like life insurance and annuities, mm -hmm. that uh, that are common and that you commonly are uh, helping people with. Yeah, I mean the whole business side of things. Okay. I mean, I have restaurants insured. Um, mm -hmm law offices and yeah. hair salons and mm -hmm. the contractors, the HVAC, plumbing, electrician people. Everybody's got to have yeah, it. Yeah, everybody's got to have it. Mm -hmm. um, got the whole work comp arena. Um, yeah, we talked about boat, four-wheeler, snowmobile, camper, fish house. Got mm -hmm. a difference kind of between primary home, seasonal home stuff. Mm -hmm. um, gosh, we... we we in our agency don't sell health insurance. That's kind of a whole separate beast. That's a right. lot to keep up on. We want to do, we want to do justice and do right by our clients, mm -hmm. and just don't mm -hmm. feel it. We have the time to stay educated to on that, that too. Yeah. So kind of let the people that just do health insurance just do mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So you can only can't really be the jack of all trades, no, you know. No. So, you know, I I was when I was kind of doing a little bit of. Um, uh, prep for this interview, I read somewhere that they said that insurance is actually one of the big cornerstones of our economy. It is. Generally speaking. It is. Almost, especially the homeowners. Yeah, yeah. The homeowners is. I mean, that's yeah. your, that's, that's for some people, their retirement. I mean, when they sell their home or it's a lot of, mm -hmm. uh, you know, these lake homes, especially up here that mm -hmm. have been in the family for generations, that's a big asset building generational wealth tool. I mean, Mm -hmm. people add on and put big money into those. Yeah, I mean. And so if we didn't have insurance, um, I, I mean, I think our, the way we live our lives would be fundamentally different, wouldn't it? I mean. It, you'd have to, uh, yeah, I mean, you'd have to do, man, it'd be a lot more self-discipline or yeah. maybe like the bank would have to have different products or you'd have to be more no. self-disciplined about setting aside a certain amount each month for things that might happen. I mean, it's. And that's really you tough. Know, yeah. yeah, it's really tough. I, I was actually talking to my dad about this because yeah. my dad retired and um, and he bought a house in Mexico. Okay. 
And I said, well, Dad, how do you insure yeah. your house in Mexico? He goes, no, the concept of, of homeowner's insurance does not exist in Mexico. I can believe that. And yeah. I was like, well, well yeah. then what happens if your house <laughs> burns down? He's like, you lose it. Yeah. <laughs> what happened? And then and he, he also went as far, you know, I said, well, okay, so then obviously you've got to have car insurance. Nope, there's, there's no car insurance either. I said, well, how do they take care of it if somebody... Yeah. He goes, well, usually what happens is like what, the family will come over to the other person's house and they'll... You know they'll make an agreement on how much money ought yeah. to be paid for it, yeah. and that's how it works. But we, yeah. <laughs> but that really hold that would if that were the case, we would really be held back. I mean, yeah. I think it would be uh, uh, it would be hard to to actually be able to own things like homes and and cars without having that peace of mind that comes with insurance. Yeah, I mean, I guess personally, if I had to self insure, I'd own a pretty small pulse i mean yeah. because if you're trying to set aside in a yeah. savings account or yeah. even if you weren't going to rebuild just so that you're not out so much but interestingly enough this is kind of coming up like in florida on the coastline oh, some of yes. these affluent yes. people um i wish i had the exact article uh with me that i saw about it but you know there's insurance companies that are like we can't be solvent on the Florida coastline anymore. So you yeah, have some of- told me there's like a state insurance company or something, right? Yeah, so it's it's some of those people kind of pooling together. Yeah. And especially Citizens, maybe some of the affluent Florida, right? ones on yeah. the coastline. Okay, we're all, we're kind of gonna form these, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna know the proper term here with these joint savings accounts or joint yeah kind of self-insured funds okay let's all put in that's like they do with medical insurance in some places yeah too, let's yeah, all put yeah. in whatever 30 grand a year yeah let it build interest somewhere yeah something hits again and we all kind of get to take our piece toward stuff you know um i mean it has come up where different insurance products or companies have gone bust i mean work comp in california they mm -hmm. had I think they still do way more people through a state fund because the private market kind of went broke yeah. from the severity of claims. Um, it, so yeah, that does go back to the using that term cornerstone of the economy. It's a yeah. it's a huge, I mean, it's a huge deal. How can anyone afford to rebuild down in in Florida? Like it's like it seems like year after year there's yeah. there's a hurricane and then. How could you afford insurance? I mean, it's just, it seems like- Well, they're like paying exorbitant amounts, especially the yeah. flood insurance amounts. I mean, some of them affluent people on the coast, I mean, yeah. tens of thousands per year. Do we and have flood insurance around here? Or, I mean, yeah, interesting topic. So yeah. it's often referred to as one of the biggest myths in Minnesota, like, well, you can't even get flood insurance. Mm -hmm. you, you actually can. It's just not very popular and we're not in a flood zone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can get it but a lot of people just don't because we're just if you really want to get technical you talk about clay soil versus sandy soil and yeah. all kinds of things i guess it's actuarial so, stuff yeah right? this yeah. <laughs> this region specifically yeah. um where i guess that would come into play and it's happened one year i can think of where we had a few people take out a small flood policy mm -hmm. ground or surface water coming up over your foundation so maybe a year where we had an exorbitant amount of snow and then a fast melt in the spring mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you got water in your basement from that That's, that would be flood that would be than, flood okay yep and flood and earthquake are the only things excluded on a minnesota homeowner so yeah. Has it's Minnesota just, ever had an earthquake? I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Um, but yeah, flood yeah. is just not... I mean, you look at the Red River area, Moorhead. Yeah, uh, right. I, I would, saw some videos of that. You'd yeah. want to have flood insurance over there, probably. Yeah. Um, right in our area, it's... Probably not. Not a not huge issue, much. but you can get it. Yeah, but it, it so, probably wouldn't be very expensive. No, nope. Right, yeah. No. Nope. Um, uh, just a couple more odds and ends here yeah. on insurance that I was curious about. So... Uh, dogs, you know, uh, dog bites. Mm -hmm. um, is there any, do you have to report to your agency, like, or your insurance company, like what kind of dogs you have? And is, would your rates go up if like, say you own like a pit bull as opposed to a uh, Yorkie? So that is also something that has changed recently. Mm -hmm. um, we, th it used to be until very recently mm -hmm. that insurance companies could exclude for different types of dogs and you yeah. specifically ask now the question on the application is just do you have a dog yes or no does it have a bite history nothing about the type what brought that about 
I'm not exactly, I'm not exactly sure. I, I mean, I personally kind of think that some of the breeds that were stereotyped per se as the vicious breeds vicious breeds it didn't really turn out to be that way and there was but there had to been some kind of like too. political like yeah I th- there was something i yeah. we could find the article and have a part two but yeah, yeah there's several things that brought it about where it's a yeah. minnesota legislation deal that yeah, yeah you can't well i mean there's the, this whole group of people out there who claim that pit bulls are like not dangerous yeah. and they're just like you know having a you know they're the nicest dogs in the world yeah. but yeah we all know that right you know they're, they're responsible for the majority of yeah. the attacks on humans and other dogs yeah but, but so someone one of those people must have gone to the legislation and say and said uh, let's uh, let's not treat pit bulls unfairly or whatever, yeah. and so let's get that change in. It's just I think that's funny. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, have you ever? I know this is kind of an odd one, but have you ever come across somebody who is asking about um, having a sp- uh, like a special kind of policy because according to their beliefs, they believe that insurance is like a form of gambling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've had all kinds of comments on yeah. insurance over the years. Yeah. Um, you know. It, when you talk, well, I mean, I've actually said to some people, if, mm-hmm. if if you don't have loans on things, okay, so to the person that thinks insurance is, quote, a scam or gambling mm-hmm. or an unfair pool of risk, uh-huh. all the things, yeah. Uh, my comment to some of these people has been, well, if you don't have loans on anything, you don't have a mortgage company or a lender, you don't have to have it. You don't have yeah. to have it. I yeah. mean, you have to have liability well, on your car. On your car, yeah. To be on the road. Yeah. But mm-hmm. then that just goes back to the self-discipline thing. If, you, if And depending what your house is worth, I mean, if you want to mm-hmm. do a different financial <laughs> strategy for yourself and set aside yeah. for some of that, yeah. I mean, that you you do you. you know? But so they don't have like um, like the kinds of insurance where it's more like a shared risk model or something like that. I mean, I suppose they might, but you know, where they, where they don't consider it to be because like insurance is one way of thinking about it is, is it, it's a, it's a bet that something is not going to happen mm-hmm. or it's a bet that something will happen or, mm-hmm. you know, whatever, yeah. hedging your bet or something, yeah. you know? Yeah. I mean, there's <laughs> policies out there on the homeowner's side where you, you can just insure for market value. Okay. So this kind of comes up, like, let's say you have a vacant home especially it comes up in the case of maybe a parent that passed away. Yeah. No one, none of the kids, no one's going to take the house. Okay. So if it burns down, we're not going to rebuild that anyway. So we're just going to do a market value policy. So whatever, let's say Becker County says the market value of just that structure is, that's what you're insured for. Okay. Mm-hmm. Then you take that money, you sell the land, you should be financially even you know mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. um however <laughs> if you go the other route i don't know if you remember the the uh forest fire type stuff monaga area oh was it the decade green, green back river or whatever green, yeah or green um, valley or something like that right now that did spur some if you want to call it non-insurance believers to become believers yeah there was people that are like wow you know we came really close to maybe losing our house or a lot of smoke damage, you know, no mortgage or anything. I, I guess I think we are going to put insurance on our house, you know? So, cause it, it's, you see it a yeah. lot in the industry over two decades. Like, mm-hmm. God, I've never had a claim. And that is true. A, yeah. a lot, a lot of people well, have I mean, and never. That's, hope, that's, that's what you you're know? hoping that you yeah. never have that claim. Right. But it's, it's a, it's a fine. It's one of the things insurance is a financial tool. So mm-hmm. kind of, it's just. You're your buying security portfolio. and peace yeah. of mind, really. I mean, yeah. Uh, think about it so um all right uh so just we'll just wrap up on uh, just a couple of personal things so you're originally from sock center yep. and you moved up here when and uh let's see the end of 2005 end of 2005 yeah okay uh your husband jeremy was on the podcast yes, earlier yeah. he's yeah. the head coach of the uh, yeah. football team and it, they i think they had a successful season they you have know? i mean i think they 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 played well and made a lot of improvements and everything like and that it's been so, some close games some of the ones that are losses i mean this one friday night was well, a tough one yeah. yeah right in there yeah he's been coaching yeah. 18 years yep so. and that's great and you guys have what three daughters three today? daughters yeah all right and um you uh it's said in your bio that you like fishing with your dad and, and yeah, yeah. I, I used to actually have more uh-huh. time for that but i yeah, it's do summer like to when winter I can. like what's your preference uh, probably summer uh yeah. But yeah we love being on the lake uh mm-hmm. jeremy's 
dad has a place on Hyde of Land Lake. With us, oh, like, yeah. Being on the pontoon, swimming, just being near the water, view of the water, mm-hmm. all that stuff, being outside. So, yeah, that's probably why the I worked uh, for Traveler's Insurance in uh, downtown St. Paul for three years. Just the metro was not a good fit for me because I, I just I like to be outdoors. Yeah, so absolutely. Be, just be outside a lot. Uh, this wasn't a good fit for me. But yeah. Park Rabbits has been good to me. We love the area. and Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything um, uh, that you think Park Rapids needs in terms of, uh, you know, businesses or um, restaurants or anything like that? Gosh. Um, I mean, sometimes, <laughs> yeah, maybe a, 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 well, we do kind of have a lot of restaurants, but maybe, yeah. I don't know. Uh, sometimes you wish maybe a different clothing store or something and uh-huh. I have to buy everything online. Yeah. Um, or drive to Fargo. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, I, I think we need... Um, some type of like YMCA yeah. community center, you know, yeah. similar to Purim, mm-hmm, Wadena, mm-hmm. Detroit, Detroit Lakes, Lakes yeah. mm-hmm. uh, somewhere for kids or anybody really to hang out, swim. Mm-hmm. I mean, we do have some nice fitness centers here now, but to get that indoor walking track, I yeah. think. And, the Hammer Fit Center is great. Oh, it's yeah. awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, to get that indoor walking track and maybe a pool. I mean, high school has a pool, but one more option. That's mm-hmm. the biggest thing that I can think of. Yeah. I know the DL and Perm and Wadena ones are very popular and very well used. So, Do you see the area growing in population over the oh, years? Oh, I do. Yeah. And um, we, in our industry specifically, we've seen a lot of people that made the cabin up here to their primary home. Yeah, especially after COVID. Right? Yeah, yeah, and working from home more, being able to work from home more. Mm-hmm. Um, people from the metro that just want a smaller school, smaller community. Mm-hmm. You just notice it too, just being around in the winter, that there's just noticeably more mm-hmm. traffic and more people around all year. I think we've grown a lot. Yeah. Just, right. I mean, look at how many grocery stores we have. Detroit Lakes only even has one. Yeah, how can we have four? Well, they we have, have Aldi, yeah. the Central Lakes, Walmart. We have more than them. We have four. I mean, yeah. that kind of tells you how big the area is. Yeah. Kind of how much is going Bemidji on around too, here. Don't we? Actually, well, maybe, I don't know. Target, and I thought there was a sti- yeah. statistic out there at one time that, you know, we have our all year population, but the area in the summer is like, what? Oh, yeah. 75,000 perhaps. It's a huge. Huge yeah, number. Big yeah. number. And yeah. yeah, I think that's only, that's only growing too. So. Yeah. Um, last question. So, you know, you've got some, you've got kids and, um, you know, as you're, they're getting ready to, to enter adult life and everything like that. Do you have any advice that you would give to, uh, to a young person who's kind of getting, you know, to be around 18 and ready to go out and start a career? Um, just in general or like if they want insurance or just anything? You can answer it either way. <laughs> um, I guess personally, I've been th- uh, kind of excited that there's kind of a renewed excitement for the trades and uh-huh. trade schools. Yeah. Um, I think college is great, like four-year colleges. I think there's a, a lot of awesome experiences that come out of that, but I think there's a lot we can learn on the job too in mm-hmm. a lot of mm-hmm. uh, a lot of industries. Um, I guess I would, gosh, what would I say? <laughs> I guess I, I don't think that you have to go to a four-year school, yeah. you know, like mm-hmm. look at the trade schools, look at maybe working for a year or two, seeing what fits you. Um, just, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, don't feel like maybe you have to have an exact plan senior year of high school. Or I guess just seeing people get away that I have to go to that four-year school, you know, mm-hmm. like there's, mm-hmm. we need a lot of the trades. Maybe it sound like a broken record because yeah. so many people Absolutely. are saying that lately. So- but accurate yeah deal a lot with it in my industry all these all the trades people are like we are dying for help you know like, i always said he's so, like if you want to make money like don't don't be a lawyer go, yeah. go like <laughs> learn how to work on lines or something yeah. you know be a lineman or a, you know a welder yeah. or something like that you know if you yeah. really want to make money um, i guess some oh i do did this think of something i have talked a lot especially with my oldest daughter about this learn how to talk on the phone learn how to conversate in person this texting thing and that we can only get something yeah. done via text is honestly s- so annoying and yeah. so non-productive like that's one of my favorite topics is, is people like, skills and and you know people not concentrating on them so i i guess i take maybe a little bit of pride in the fact that my daughters can like answer an adult and mm-hmm. talk to an adult adult and carry on a little bit of conversation like 
How do you think they learned that? I guess maybe by us parents encouraging it Mm -hmm. or even us texting them less. Like, hey, Mm -hmm. let's talk about this in person when you get home. Sure. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I, I am old school in the fact that. I love to see my clients, especially new clients in yeah. person. Like, hey, if you're in the area or you're in town for the closing mm-hmm. on this seasonal home, do you think you can stop in for 10 minutes? I just love to just make that yep. actual human interaction, shake your hand, just... just. There's no substitute for it. Yeah, there, mm-hmm. there really isn't. We're just, we're losing so much of that in mm-hmm. society. So I guess that's like my number one thing. Like, mm-hmm. just be able to pick up the phone and have a quality, productive conversation or look someone in the eye and mm-hmm. talk in person and have a long conversation. There's so much gets lost in text and screens and yeah. media. And well, and then the, yeah, I see there's like this, this sort of prevailing attitude where people say stuff like, I'm not a people person or I hate people or whatever. And it's just like, okay, so, I mean, this is, it's a total cop out. Like you're, yeah. you can't, you can't have that attitude and, you know, realistically and succeed but if you're you know. texting and Instagramming, I don't have all that. Yeah. TikTok, Instagram, yeah. all that. But if you have all that and you're texting and you're posting on Facebook all the time, well, you actually are a people person. You're you're wanting that you're right. response. Yes. You're, yes. you're wanting response, dialogue, validation, whatever it be. But you can control it. Like, yeah. you, like you, you can select and edit, you know, the only the best photos yeah, or videos true. that you want to put out there. And so... I think that also creates this these unreasonable expectations that people have about, you know, things like appearance and yeah. you know, just like you're so you're you're only gonna post your W's. You're not you're not gonna yeah. post your L's, right? I mean I just read so, something this morning. Don't yeah. don't don't compare to someone's highlight reel. Because you know? that's all it is. Yeah, comparison you know? is the thief of joy. I mean, it's just yeah. I like I, that. Yeah, yeah. That's good. So Yeah. Well, Andrea, it's been really uh, nice uh, chatting with you today. You it Thanks. was very informative. And um, so, yeah, we've, we're have we working our way through your entire family now. So yeah. I think, <laughs> actually, I, I think, uh, we're, are the Nordics the first uh, both husband and wife that we that we interviewed? Yeah, until we got a Scott's wife on. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So it's a it's a first for the podcast. Yeah. So, but no, um, thank you so much for, for coming in today. And, um, and I would invite people, yeah. as I just got done saying, I do like seeing people in person. I yep. love talking. You got questions about insurance, you, anything, just stop in, call. We're And you're at the serve. Northway, Northway. Northway, two doors south of the Ford dealership. Yep. All Long right. standing building, used to be Straight River Real Estate. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we're... We're here to serve. Been around a long time. Thank you, Andrea Nordic. Thank you.